Hey guys, how you doing? Today I'm going to go over the five phrases that instantly persuade customers. And by the way, my name is Andy Elliott. Please give me a thumbs up, like this video if you love it, subscribe to my channel. I put out daily sales videos, most of the time on negotiations, closing, overcoming objections, word tracks that I love. The main deal, today I'm going to talk about persuading. Persuading is key. It's very important. So I've come up with five simple phrases that I think that you can use all the time. Number three is my favorite. Watch all five and you decide which one you like the best. So in the beginning, I'm going to talk about phrase number one. This is, have you ever made an exception? I always say this to customers. When I'm sitting down with them and I'm maybe negotiating, they say, well, I don't know. I say, have you ever made an exception? Have you ever made one? That is a strong, powerful word. The second phrase to how you use the word exception is this, would it be possible to make one exception this one time? So listen, so next time you're in the heat of something and somebody's like, well, I'm not really sure I want to do this. You know what I mean? We're not really wanting to do something. Guys, have, have you ever made one exception? One exception one time? That right there, that is a powerful key phrase. Now I want you to understand, it doesn't matter where you use it at whether it's in the beginning or in the end or it's in maybe the negotiation cycle of sales. Customers, if you have a good relationship with them, is it possible that you'd make one exception one time? That right there is a powerful phrase. I want you to take that phrase and I want you to write it down. And if you're a closer, especially a master closer, you have key phrases that are tattooed on your heart that you're ready to use at different times. That's a great phrase to use, all right? Number two, Mr. Customer, if I were in your position, I'd feel the same exact way. Why do we always say agree with the customer? Because any time that we're about to give them a, a different perspective or a different way to look at something, we always need them to understand that we understand them. Right? Because if you don't say that you understand them, a wall's going to come up and you and your customer are going to be doing this. So this is a simple phrase to, to remember. Mr. Customer, if I were in your position, I'd feel the same exact way. This sentence, this sentence gives validation that number one, they're not wrong, okay? We never want to let them know you're wrong. But number two, that we can show them a different perspective, hopefully loosen them up, and then that they'll listen to our proposition or our proposal. So, this is very crucial that you understand this, that any time that there's friction, you always agree, Mr. Customer, if I were in your position, I, I'd feel the same way, the exact same way. But, and then that's when you can go into it, right? And you can actually identify with them, tell them that they're not wrong, they're validated that they're not wrong, and then you come in from a different perspective. These are easy, simple, key phrases. Number three, this is my favorite. This is one you'll love. Matter of fact, hold on, number five, you guys may like number five, but number three is probably one of my favorites, okay? Obviously, and I love the word obviously, obviously. I tell you, obviously, I'd love to sell you this car today, and I know that you said no matter what, that you weren't going to buy today. How many times has a customer told you, hey, we're not buying today? We're not buying today. And you know what? You don't hear that in the beginning. You kind of like just, you know, like move around it, right? Like that's a stall. Okay, I get it. No, that's fair. Everybody that, you know, comes in, they don't have to buy today, just when, whenever it's good for you. And then you just kind of move around it. But as you start selling and selling and selling, you find a vehicle they love, you find a product that they want to take home. What happens? Well, they tell you, no matter what, we're not going to buy today. I want you to use this phrase. This phrase is very kind of sneaky around the side and it actually probes for them to open up and to tell you what it would really take to do business right now. Now, watch the way I say it, okay? So watch this. I'd love to sell you this car right now. Let's say we're selling cars. I'd love to sell you this car today and I know that you said no matter what, you're not buying today. But how will you know a year from now whether you buy today or next week, it doesn't matter whether you made the right choice or not. What would the dealer have done to make you pass go? Now I want you to just think about this for a second. But how will you know a year, right, from now, whether you buy today or you don't buy today? That doesn't matter. How will you know a year from now, right? whether or not that you have made the right choice or not. What would the dealer have done to make you, you know, pass go and to, and to make you do business? You know, what would the dealer have done? Whether you buy today or you buy a week from now, it doesn't really matter. What do you think that dealer is going to have to do? 
How would you know a year down the road that you've made the right choice, right? What would you see that would have been done today, right? Or next week, right? And you want to just be quiet and let them talk and actually try to see if you can surface something. So when I say things like this, and number five is going to be probably my favorite. Number three, people that really just tell me they're not going to buy today. There's no way. And they're literally adamant about it. I use that and I use it all the time. And sometimes you're going to get an opportunity where someone's going to tell you, well, the dealer would have had to done X, Y, and Z. Okay. Well, at least you know what X, Y, and Z is now so that you can handle that. Because you can't overcome, I'm not buying today, but you can overcome X, Y, and Z. That's really the core source of the problem. Now, I want to share with you, as I do closing and negotiation videos all the time, these little persuasion phrases are very good for you to advance the sell and to start adding to your skill set ways to be more prepared than you're prepared now. These are for more difficult customers. All right, number four, simply adding the person's name. This is something that I like a lot. Okay, when people hear their name, they instantly perk up. We all know that. I always say remember to remember what you hear, so remember someone's name. Pay attention, right? Attention is instantly called in the direction, and somewhere it implies that the person knows you and that there's a connection there when they hear their name. Look, when somebody says my name, hey, Andy, I immediately think that that person knows me. Why? Because they're not saying, sir, sir. No, they don't know me when they say sir. If they say, hey, excuse me, they don't know me. But if they say Andy, it's like, I hear Andy. And I'm thinking, okay, I automatically imply that I know that person. Or that he knows me. Guys, I'm going to tell you this. Persuading factor in dealing business with people is simple as this. Adding the person's name. The more you add a person's name, it 10x's the sentence that you're saying. Okay, number five. You guys will like this. And I'm sure that you've heard this before, okay? This is called the yes ladder. And I want to explain this to you just so we go into this. If you want to train to become one of the top salesmen in the country, sometimes you're going to have to learn things that you're not used to learning. And learning about persuading and influence is key. These small little phrases... Master closers, guys that close any deal, any time, any place, and close it for all the money. It's not always about negotiating. Sometimes it's about a key phrase that you can pull inside and actually buckle down and have the customer identify with you or push them through a tough situation when they can't make a decision, when they're undecided, and you actually had a little key phrase to move them right on through. So I want to tell you, advance yourself and learn these small key phrases. These are things that can instantly turn a deal, especially if you're wanting to close more and make more. Number five, all right, this is called the yes ladder. Now, I know this since I was, I've been doing sales for 22 years. The yes ladder was something I learned when I was very young. It never gets old, ever. And let me explain. I'm going to give you an example here, okay? So the yes ladder, it starts off with getting small yeses. Small yeses turn into big yeses. We walk them up, okay? I'm going to give you an example. If I wanted to ask a girl out to maybe go like salsa dancing with me, like obviously I'm married, but let's just, I'm going to use an example here. If I was going to ask a girl out to maybe go salsa dancing with me, let me explain to you how to maybe get three small yeses and then maybe get a big yes. And then you could take this and put this to any area in your life in sales or something that you want to get a yes to. Okay. So have you ever heard of salsa dancing? How, how, how hard is that? Hey, have you ever heard of salsa dancing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have. Okay, cool. Does it seem like something you'd like? You said you like dancing. Does it seem like something you'd like? You know, I kind of I like dancing, so I, I guess yeah, it might be something I like. All right, watch this. Perfect. Okay, would you like to go with me sometime? Hear that word sometime. Would you like to go with me sometime? Sure. Okay, three small yeses. Now watch, what was the main yes you wanted, which is right here, it's simple, perfect. Why don't you give me your number and then this Friday, they have a little class at seven o'clock, right? Afterwards, we can go out dancing. Okay, guess what? Three small yeses, do you think that honestly I'm interested, have you ever heard of salsa dancing? No. Does it seem like something you'd like? No. But you know what? I walk up the yes ladder, one, two, three, Real question. 
My idea is I want you to understand this, that you guys have got to start setting up things in your life that you want to get yeses to and go for smaller yeses for a minute and then get that real yes. And I want to share with you these five phrases. Watch this video two or three times. Take a pen and a piece of paper and write them down. If you're very serious about becoming one of the best salesmen in the country, you need to learn everything there is about influencing, persuading. Everything. These five phrases will help you. Guys, have a blessed day. I'll talk to you soon.